The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 18 of our program. I am Taso Gerard, your economics teacher, opposite art. Before we start this session, let us uh, look at the assignment we had in the last session. This is the assignment we had. An economy in which only four commodities are consumed by households witnesses the following price changes. We have commodities here. Foil, the weight is given as three. The year, the price in year one is 350 and that of year two is uh, 450. Beer, weight two, price 350 and that's price of year one, while that of year two is 375. Bread, the weight is given as one, price year one, 100, year two, it falls to 50. Electricity index, uh, weight, sorry, is the highest, is four. Price in year one, 60. Year two price increases to 65. Now, you are expected to calculate the retail price index for year two, considering year one as the base year. So this is our solution. Now to calculate the retail price index, for the average index for the entire basket of goods, we are supposed to calculate this column. We computed this column, that's year two price index. How did we get a year two price index? To get the price, to get this 128.6 for fuel, for instance, we have to take the current year price, which is 350, divided by current year, sorry, is 450. Current year two is the current year. It's 450 divided by the base year, which is uh, 350 times 100 on 1, that is going to give us 128.6. We do the same for beer. We take 375 divided by 350 times 100 on 1. It, give all, it will give us 107.1. Uh, Bread, 50 divided by 100 times 100 will give us 50. And then the last electricity, 65 divided by 60 times 100 will give us 108.3. Now, if we take this, uh, the price indices for year two and multiply by this, the weight, the weight here represents the importance of the commodities. We multiply by the weight, we are going to get the weighted price index. So we take the first 128.6 times three, it gives us this amount, that's 385.8. Next is two times 107.1, 214.3. 1 times 50, it doesn't change, it remains 50. 4 times 108.3 gives us 433.3. Now, I have to add all the weighted price of the indices. We'll add all of this. When we add all, we're going to have 1,083.4. Now, the price index for year 2 is calculated using this formula. The sum of weighted index numbers divided by the sum of weight. The sum of weighted index numbers here will add it as 1083.4. The sum of weight here is 10, that's 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4 is 10. When we divide it, this is what we have. 
we have 108.3. Now, what's the implication of this answer? It shows that the price have increased by 8.3%. That implies there is uh, probably an increase in the cost of living, or a fall in living standards. Okay, let's get to the lesson proper. Our lesson for today is uh, based on commercial banks. This is lesson 18, based on commercial banks. Before we start, we're going to look at this plan, or better still, this is a plan we'll, we'll use. We'll start with the objectives of the lesson, previous knowledge, problem situation, then we'll look at the lesson, application exercises, and we'll end up with an assignment. These are the objectives. By the end of this, class, uh, of this lesson, or of this session, students should be able to define commercial banks with local examples, examples in Cameroon. They should be able to explain the functions of commercial banks. Previous knowledge. Students can explain the value of money. We'll get a real life situation. A mayor of your locality observes that the recent increase in theft within the community has led to the loss of huge sums of money and consequently increasing hardship among the population. You are called upon to advise households in your locality on what to do to prevent the constant theft. So by the end of this uh, lesson, we'll be able to see how this problem could be resolved. What are commercial banks? Commercial banks can be regarded, are regarded as profit-making privately owned financial institutions which accept deposits, safeguard them, and grant loans to customers. They are privately owned. And uh, they are public limited companies. They are public limited companies. Let's look at some examples of commercial banks in Cameroon. We have Commercial Bank of Cameroon, CBC, the Standard Chartered Bank, Afriland First Bank, United Bank of Africa, UBA, Union Bank of Cameroon, that's UBC, Bank International du Cameroon pour les Pain et le Pédé, that's BSEC, uh, National Financial Credit Bank, these are some few, and there are still many others. What are the functions of commercial banks? We're looking at the, let's look at the, the main functions of commercial banks. The first, we'll start with accepting deposit. Accepting deposit actually is the oldest function of commercial banks. How do commercial banks accept deposit? Commercial banks accept deposits from the general public for safekeeping. These deposits are accepted into the following account. These are accounts. We have the current account, savings account, as well as large fixed term deposit account. Let's look at the account uh, separately. Let's start with the current account. This account permits owners to withdraw money with the use of checks without giving any prior notice to the bank. It means uh, the owners are not supposed to notify the bank before withdrawal is done. They can withdraw at any time. And because the bank facilitates withdrawal, charges are paid to the bank. So the account actually does not earn interest. Instead, the owners, they pay charges to the bank for facilitating withdrawal at any time. Then we have the savings account. Uh, the current account can equally be regarded as demand deposit or site deposit. The savings account. With this account, some notifications, notification is required before withdrawal with the use of a passbook. Actually, in principle, customers are expected to notify the bank before withdrawal is done. Why is this so? Because uh, 
Actually, the money is used by the bank to lend. And uh, customers, they receive interest. The bank actually pay them interest, a lower amount, then give the money out at a higher interest rate. The difference now makes their profit. So it earns interest. We have the last large fixed term deposit. Money is saved for a fixed period of time and cannot be withdrawn before a particular time. It attracts relatively high rates of interest. Actually, this account money uh, is usually kept between three months to like five years. And it's, uh, it doesn't involve very small amount of money. The money needs to, uh, most often, around five from 500,000 francs, most often. The bank issues certificate of deposit to those who have this account. So those who have this account, they receive a uh, certificate of deposit, which can be discounted. Can be discounted. Now, let us uh, look at another function. The first function we saw was uh, accepting deposit. The second function now is granting of loans or lending. Commercial banks lend part of their deposits to the general public on interest. Lending is done in three ways, the following ways. We have direct loans, that is, crediting a customer's account with the amount of the loan and an interest rate is determined based on the entire amount. So you credit your account probably after you might have provided an acceptable collateral security. We have overdraft. That is when the bank allows the customer to withdraw more than what is uh, in his uh, deposit. Usually, interest is paid only on the amount overdrawn. Another uh, way of lending could be through discounting bills. Discounting bills means uh, paying an amount less than the full face value of the bill. Banks pay an amount less than the full face value and hold the bill until it matures. So the difference now becomes the bank's commission. Those are the three main ways through which uh, lending could be affected. Direct loans, overdraft, and discounting bills. Now, another function of commercial banks is acting as agents of payment. Commercial banks settle debts on behalf of their customers. They act as agents of payment to customers through the following ways. Actually, commercial banks, they help to pay uh, government workers, pay uh, workers of private uh, institutions. These are, they, they do that using the following ways. Could be through a check. A check is simply a written order uh, by a debtor requesting the bank, bank could be regarded as a drawing, to pay a, a specified amount of money to a named person or to a named person's account like when it's a cross check. We have a credit cards. There are cards provided by banks to permit customers to buy, in particular, uh, probably supermarkets without the use of money. We have credit transfers. These are instructions given by a debtor instructing his bank to debit his account and credit the account of his creditor who is also a customer of the same bank. Then they could equally do that through standing orders. Standing orders is when uh, the customer requests the bank to effect a regular amount to a named person. So these are the various ways through which the banks, uh, commercial banks, act as agents of payment through checks, credit cards, credit transfers, uh, standing orders. Another function of commercial banks, this could now be secondary functions, we have safekeeping of valuables. Safekeeping of valuables. It acts as the custodian of the valuables of its customers by providing lockers where they can keep their valuables such as jewelries and valuable documents. So they provide lockers or safes where customers could actually keep their valuables. Another function is to facilitate foreign travel. 
They actually help to facilitate foreign travel. This is done by making foreign payments and issuing travelers checks. So you can actually uh, get a foreign, probably foreign currency from your commercial bank. Actually, with this function of facilitating foreign travel, they equally help to ease uh, and providing each, uh, travelers check, they help to facilitate importation and exportation. They also act as executors and uh, trustees. They act as executors and trustees. How do they do this? They can look after a dead person's exit and dispose of his property in conformity with his will. So you can actually write a will and keep it the bank. They are actually going to execute it as is uh, in the will. Advisor to customers is another function. Commercial banks render useful advice to their customers on the choice of investment decisions customers want to make. Now, rendering advice here, uh, commercial banks have experts that can actually evaluate uh, the risks as well as the profitability of each investment and advise their customers on which to take. They help in the implementation of monetary policy of the government. Commercial banks help monetary authorities in effectively executing government's monetary policy as directed by the central bank. Of course, the monetary policy you are thinking about uh, uh, the use of money supply and interest rate in order to permit the government to achieve our macroeconomic objectives like full employment, price stability, uh, steady rate of economic growth, and so forth. So commercial banks are always ready to help the government in uh, achieving or implementing the monetary policy. Now, we are already at um, the end of the lesson, but before we get to the end, before we actually stop uh, to go to exercises, we need to recall what we have done in this session. We started by defining commercial banks. We saw commercial banks. We said uh, they are profit-making, privately-owned financial institutions, which accept deposits, safeguard them, and grant loans to customers. And we saw that uh, the main uh, source of the main source of their profit is granting of loans, the interest they charge from loans granted to customers. Now, we saw the following functions of commercial banks. We said they act as, or rather we started with accepting deposits. And I did say this is the oldest function of commercial banks. They accept deposits into three accounts. We saw the site deposit or the current account or demand deposits. We have the saving accounts or we can call saving account the time deposit and then the large fixed term deposit which is the account where money is kept for a longer period of time and earns a relatively higher rate of interest. We looked at the second uh, function, lending, which is the most profitable function of commercial banks. And we saw lending to be done through uh, direct loans, where you just credit the customer's account with the, with the amount of money. It could be done through overdraft, allowing a customer to withdraw more than his, uh, he has in his deposit, and interest is paid only on the amount of withdrawn. We have discounting bills, as paying an amount less than the full face, full, full face value to the customer. Those are the uh, three ways of lending. The next was acting as agents of payment, permitting, helping customers to do payment on their behalf. We said that is done with uh, government employees as well as employees of private institutions. And that could be done through, we saw checks, written order by a debtor requesting the bank to pay an amount of money to a named person or to the named person's account. It could be done using credit transfers, instructing the bank to debit the account of the customer and credit that of the cost of the creditor 
who is equally a customer of the same bank. That's a method that the government uses to pay civil servants and probably other uh, institutions like CDC and so forth. We have standing orders where the customer requests the bank to effect regular payments. And uh, we equally have uh, credit cards, cards provided by the bank to permit customers buy without the use of money. And then we saw another function as safekeeping of valuables. The first three functions are actually regarded as the primary functions. Safekeeping of valuables will be regarded as the secondary function. We keep valuables like um, uh, land titles, uh, jewelries, and so forth. Facilitate foreign travel in that they could provide a traveler's check, foreign currency. They act as executors and trustees. It could actually help the customer to execute uh, its will accordingly. And uh, the others. Now, we are going to move uh, straight to application exercises. We'll start with exercise one. Which is the oldest function of a commercial bank? A. Lending. B. Accepting deposits. C. Acting as agents of payment. And D. Providing travelers checks. So, which is the oldest function of commercial banks? Of course, lending is the most profitable function. We said accepting deposits represents the oldest function. So the right answer here is B. That's the right answer. We move to the next question. Which is the most profitable function of commercial banks? Of course, the most profitable function. Let's read the uh, options. A here is lending. B, accepting deposits. C, acting as agents of payment and D, providing travelers checks. So, lending, of course, is the best answer. Accepting deposits, we had already, we, we saw that it represents the oldest function. Acting an agent of payment will explain how they help to pay settled bills on behalf of the customers and providing travelers checks. The right answer here is, uh, is A. So, lending is the correct answer. Exercise three. A written order by a debtor to his bank to pay on demand a specified sum of money to a named person. This refers to, look at the phrase, A, credit cards, B, standing orders, C, check, D, overdraft. Now let's briefly look at the, uh, uh, look at those, uh, the definition so that we can easily pick out which one is correct. We know credit cards, we said they are cards that are given by banks to their customers to permit them buy without the use of money. Standing orders, we said they are regular, a regular a request given by a customer to his bank to effect a regular payment, regular payment of an amount to a specified person. Check, of course, we talk of a written order by a debtor or a drawer requesting the bank which could be called a drawee to pay an amount of money to a named person or to the named person account. Overdraft an amount of money, a bank allows the customer to withdraw above what is uh, in his deposit. Of course, from the expedited definitions, we are certain that C is the correct answer. The right answer in this case is a check which is C. Exercise 4. Commercial banks are, we we'll look at it closely, joint stock companies, retail banks, primary banks, all of the above. Joint stock companies, retail banks, primary banks, all of the above. Let's uh, just try to recall the formula, the, sorry, the uh, definition of commercial banks. We said commercial banks were privately owned financial institutions uh, that are out to maximize profit. They are, their main objective is to rather they give out loans to the public, they accept deposits, give out loans, 
And uh, I remember we said they are public limited companies. Now let's look at the answers. Joint stock companies, retail banks, primary banks, all of the above. Of course, a joint stock companies, we have a joint stock company can either be private joint stock or public joint stock company. We have a public limited liability company or public limited liability company. So the best answer is uh, would have been a joint stock company, but uh, retail banks is equally one of the ways through which commercial banks are called. Primary banks equally is another name for commercial banks. So given that all of the A, B and C are correct, they, re they refer to commercial banks. That means D here represents the best answer. The right answer is all of the above. That's the best answer. Now let's get to exercise five. Commercial banks learn through one of the following ways. A. Discounting bills. B. Credit transfers. C. Special directives. D. Bank deposits. Um, we recall discounting bills, paying a full amount, paying an amount less than the full face value of the bill. Um, that is a method of lending. So A is supposed to be correct. Credit transfers is not good. Credit transfer is a method of acting as agent of payments. Special order, special directive here is actually a tool of monetary policy. Bank deposit here, distraction, bank deposit. So the right answer is uh, A, discounting bills. Now we are going to end with this assignment. What are the major problems faced by commercial banks in Cameroon? So you take it down, you take this assignment down. What are the major problems faced by commercial banks in Cameroon? So we have come to the end of this uh, session. Our next session is going to be on the balance sheet of a commercial bank. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 